Hello and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Classic video. Today I wanted to make a video about gold farms you can do while leveling in Classic WoW, kinda to help new players or people coming back to the game, and wanting to set themselves up for TBC in terms of getting raw gold for buying mounts and buying training spells and stuff like that. So this video will be more aimed at farms you can do right now, and sell the items right now to make as much gold as possible, while leveling and at max level as well, so you can make some easy gold in classic to get your 60% mount, 100% mount and to stock up on 5000 gold, so you are ready for flying in TBC. So basically I'm trying to cover this for several leveling brackets so you know where you can farm, which items to farm for and stuff like that. And right now if you are coming back to classic it is the perfect time to come back if you'd think about gold, as you can very easily make over 1000 gold while leveling from 1 to 60, and I'm even gonna bet that more than half of you will get over 1.5k, maybe 2k as well while leveling depending on which professions you choose, but it's very easy as long as you just do some grinding, and even if you don't do any grinding at all and you just sell stuff you will still make a lot of gold because of inflation. So here we go, I'm gonna show you the first farm that I've found on my new character, that I have started leveling on this character right here, on this account, so let's go. Number one is not really a specific farming area, but it's more of a farming item, like which items you should be farming for, or which items you will get while leveling that you definitely need to keep and sell if you can. And basically for this, for Alliance, I've chosen this location right here in Westfall, and what I'm doing is just killing these birds and I'm hoping to get some light feathers. Light feathers on my server are selling for 40 silver right now. I'll show you a little screen of what they sell for as well in a while. I'm just gonna do some killings and I'll show you how to get them basically. But what I do is I just stand here, usually with rested experience, as that is very easy levels. If you have rested experience while grinding as well. But these burns, both on Alliance and Horde I think, are connected to some quests. For Alliance you have like this quest down at Saldian's farm where you have to pick up different things from different animals. So you will get some light feathers while doing that quest, and by keeping your light feathers and selling them in the auction house, you are making a ton of gold. And as a new player, if you don't have any gold at all, it can be a really good farm. If you just stand here for a couple of, uh, let's say, one hour or a couple of minutes, ten minutes or something, you are going to get some light feathers, and if you just get two of them, that is 80 silver. And if you get more than three of them, you've earned more than a gold. And as a starting player, having that one gold is really valuable, and you can buy boosts in the dead mines, stockades, different dungeons, and just having gold is really nice. You can also stockpile the gold for later, so you can spend it on mounts, on training spells, or gear, and stuff like that as well. So by stockpiling early and getting some gold early, you set yourself up for massive success throughout your leveling experience. So what I'm doing in these low levels when I just have want to or have the time, I just farm some light feathers and make some gold, and you can do this from level 10. So it's a really easy way to make some gold in the very low levels, so it's very good for new players. And just to show you that I'm not making up the numbers or anything, here you have the auction house for light feathers, 40 silver e silvers each, so it's really easy to make some gold by doing this. Now as we are flying to the next location on the next farm, I also want to talk about which professions you should get while leveling to make some easy gold while leveling. So basically, if you ask me, you have three options. If you're starting out as a new character, new server, or just a new player in general, you have three options. You have skinning, you have herbalism, and you have mining. All three of those are really good for making you some gold. Skinning is still really valuable, even though Blizzard have said they will nerf drums. Leatherworking will still be really good in TBC itself for crafting gear, for crafting different armor kits as well to enchant different stuff, and because the drums will still be usable, they just won't be as overpowered as originally stated. So basically, skinning is still really valuable, but if you are going to go with skinning, you have to be one of those people that are going to grind a lot of beasts, and you will make a lot of gold if you do that, but you will have to go out of your way to grind some beasts instead of just straight up questing. If you are going to go for herbalism and mining, or any of the two really, you still have to go out of your way to pick up different things, and if you want to do that then I would suggest you go for both herbalism and mining, 
even though I think you can still only track one of those materials or mineral nodes on the minimap. So going for either skinning plus herbalism or skinning plus mining also works. It's all about what you want to invest in and what you think will be worth it. Basically, mining will be in massive demand for TBC because ores and gems are used, or ores, gems, and bars are used in pretty much every profession. You have blacksmithing, engineering, jewel crafting. Jewel crafting is a new profession as well, so people will need tons of ores and gems for that one. So you can go for mining if you want to stockpile for TBC, and people will still pay massively for those ores right now as well. If you are looking to make some gold, definitely go for either of those professions. And I would just say it's a matter of what you want to go for. So consider skinning, herbalism, and mining, and just choose two of them that you are happy with. Now I didn't really talk about why herbalism is wanted for TBC itself, but basically many of the consumables are still really good. And there's several different herbs you can farm for right now that will go up in value for TBC itself. And some of them has gone up in value already. So if you are playing on a PvE server especially, then there's some really easy gold farms for you, where you can farm specific types of herbs, and I will mention a couple of them towards the end of this video. And basically, instead of covering many farms in one video, I will split this into several videos and just cover a couple of different ones. So let me know in the comments down below if there's any specific farms or level brackets you want me to think about, or any specific professional farms and stuff like that. So instead of giving you some basic information, I just want to go in-depth on the farms that I should decide to show you for the videos themselves. So here we go, I'm just going to go to the next farm now and show you that one as well. Now the next farm I want to showcase for now is a really popular one, usually, but right now it seems like there's no one here, which is good for me. But basically we are farming for elemental water and there's several water elementals you will encounter while leveling. And I believe these are some of the earliest ones you can actually get to. Especially for like a farming area, you can find some of them in BFD. There's some elite ones down there I think, not too many though, but a couple of them. So you can get your, uh, your hands on some elemental water at a fairly low level. You can also farm them up in or at the highlands, but that zone or that spot is really, really over farmed. And there's tons of competition for that one. So this farm right here is probably the best one to go to early on when you get to the 37 level brackets. So if you are looking to farm some elemental water, this one is definitely worth it. Now elemental waters in general are used right now a lot in phase 6, because they are used for the, the consumables required for next Ramas raiding. So right now these are really hot, really in demand, and should get you some really easy gold while you are leveling. And yeah, just farm water elementals and hunt for them. Now the next farm I want to show you guys is a level 50 plus farm that happens in Blasted Lands. I always call this burning stuff, but it's Blasted Lands. You want to be level 50 plus and you're basically taking advantage of questing items. If you bring something like Herbalism, you can pick up some Gromus Blood as well, which will make you a ton of extra gold. If I remember correctly, you can get some Fire Bloom from this location as well, even though Burning Steps or the Searing Gorge would be a better place to farm for... Fire Bloom, but you can still get them from this zone as well, so you can get a ton of different herbs. And Grom's Blood is really, really important and really expensive, because it is used in crafting the Elixir of Demon Slaying, which is really useful for TBC. So, the thing we are taking advantage of on the farm itself for this zone is pretty much killing anything involved with these quests you can see that I have. And there's another Grom's Blood as well, I really wish I had uh, Herbalism right now, but I don't, so we move. But basically, it's all around the zone, you can see different locations for different things. You pick up the quests all the way up here. So yeah, all, all, all the way up north, you pick up the quests at the camp, and then you just kill stuff and loot them. Even though they aren't technically a questing item, they can still be sold on the auction house and they are incredibly useful. If I click on this one right here, you can see it gives you this item, which increases your strength by 25 for 60 minutes which is really useful for raiders, and many people require these consumables, or at least they want them for parsing. So by selling the materials needed for these items, you will make a ton of gold. Now one thing you can do is to look up the materials or the consumables that are used the most, like strength and agility, 
and just hunt those materials, intellect as well. You might want to stay away from stuff like uh, stamina and things you for stamina, and focus on agility, intellect and strength. So just go to Blasted Lands and hunt these. It is a great way to get some levels as well, and in the level 50 bracket, it is extremely expensive to buy boosts. So if you're going to boost yourself from 50 to 60, it's going to require a ton of gold. But if you just go here, you can level and make some gold at the same time, which is the perfect combination. You might not get the best gold, but you can get uh, the best experience, but you can farm gold while actually questing. And just to show you an example of how much gold you can get, I'm going to go back to the auction house and show you the price of some of these items you can get from this farm. So here we are, as you can see, Snickerfang Jowl sells for 61 silver a piece right now. Vulture Gizzard is, a, did I say 61 gold or 61 silver? I meant 61 silver, and Vulture Gizzard is selling for 39 silver each right now. And this one is the most expensive one so far, which is Scorpok Pincer selling for 3 gold and 75 silver per unit. You also have, for example, Basilisk Brain as well that is selling for about 48 or 50 silver per unit. And you also have Blasted Boar Lung, selling for 3 gold and 55 silver per unit. So by farming for these items, you can make a ton of gold while leveling. Now, they are used in a quest, so you can choose to hand them in for the quest experience as well, but I would really recommend you just farm those to sell these items for gold, as they can make you a lot of gold while grinding the later levels. And from 50 to 60, whether you grind mobs or do quests doesn't really matter a whole lot for experience per hour. So this way you can make a lot of gold and you can level up decently fast as well. And you do it without boosts, and buying boosts in that level by bracket is really expensive. So by doing this you can easily afford yourself that epic mount, and you can start saving up for epic flying as well. Now if you're going to farm for two specific ones, try to go for the blasted boar lung and the scorebuck pincer. Basically, the Scorpop Pincers drop from the Scorpions, and Blasted Boar Lungs drop from the Boars. So hunt for those two specifically, as they make the most, if you want to make the most gold per hour. Now I'm going to show you one more type of farming, it's going to be super quick. The video is already way too long, so here we go. So the next farm I want to talk about is Herbalism in general, and more specifically, two types of herbs that I'm focusing on farming right now. Number one being Firebloom, and number two being Grum's Blood. Firebloom I am farming in Searing Gorge, basically I'm doing laps around Searing Gorge itself. This is just data from today where you can pick up different Firebloom, so I'm doing a big circle around the map itself, just looking for Firebloom and grabbing them when I can. Yes, I'm still using my 60% mount on my mage. I'm just gathering gold right now, so I'm not really sure which character I'm going to buy epic mounts on but I'm planning on having a Paladin and a Rogue in TBC, and I might level those before my Mage, so instead of spending 1000 gold on the Epic Mount for this one, I'm just gonna keep it for later and invest some gold as well. Now I'm sitting on about 5000 gold in raw gold, which isn't really too much, and I've invested a little bit as well, so I think I'm good to go. But for Firebloom farming though, I'm just doing laps around this zone, and instead of showing you where the farm grumps blood because the video is way too long, Basically what I'm doing is going over to Fellwood and doing laps up and down the entire zone. So start up north and just go all the way down and do like a lap, so make it a big circle. So you go for example the left side down and the right side up and just do that on repeat. You will find tons of valuable herbs in Fellwood in general. And if you're playing on a PvP server I'll say this as well, both for Searing Gorge and for Fellwood for Herbalism Farming. You might want to try to farm outside of prime time, so either early in the morning, or late at night, or when people are at work and stuff like that. So try to avoid raiding hours, especially for Searing Gorge, as there are tons of people going to Thorium Point, then going down, or, well, yeah, everything down there. But that was more in phase 2, but still, try to avoid doing this during prime time and do it when it's less people playing. And that is basically it for the video guys, just a couple of farms I want to showcase for new players, as I'm making content both for Shadowlands or Retail and Classic, and I wanted to make the bridge between the two games a little bit uh, lower, or yeah, easier for people to come in, 
and I want to make videos for both experienced players, veterans and new players as well. So hopefully you guys found some new information and new gold farms to do. Also, if you have any questions regarding TBC Classic or Classic WoW in general, I have a Discord server as well. You can find the link to that in the description of the video. And apart from that, I think that's all of the farms covered for this video. Once again, leave a comment down below telling me which farms to test out next and which farms or professions you want to see me showcase in a potential future upload like this one. So basically a continuation for the series. And that is it for the video guys, I will leave a link to both of my TBC investments videos down below as well in a pinned comment so if you have any gold to spare in Classic and you want to turn that gold into even more gold for TBC, you can find links to my TBC investments videos down below. That is it for the video, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.